how to sculpt Ooh, baby, how to sculpt <laughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Mr. Pink, uh, otherwise known as Modern Synthesist, and in this video we're going to be talking about how to sculpt tentacles. I sculpt them for Tyranids, but anything chaos, demon related, that kind of stuff, they, they all got a good use for tentacles. In most of my videos, I recommend combining yellow and blue Nidatite epoxy putty with other putties, be it with uh, Milliput or with Epoxy Sculpt. This is gonna be one of the only videos where I tell you to use pure green stuff, just yellow and blue. And that's because green stuff is less brittle than other putties, such as Epoxy Sculpt or Milliput. And when you're making a tentacle, which is something that uh, could stick off the side of a miniature and could be like the recipient of some stress, it's good to have those be a little flexible so that they don't necessarily break and snap off. If you use a more brittle putty, um, if someone puts some strain on your tentacle, it could just snap right off. I mean, you can glue it back on, but it's kind of a pain in the ass. If you're using pure green stuff, that could be slightly less likely to happen because the green stuff is more flexible. Like I've told you before, usually I use a little more yellow than blue. When you buy them in a ribbon, you get a little more yellow than blue. And I always find that I use up all my blue and then I've got yellow left over. That's why I use about 60% yellow putty to 40% blue putty. You don't have to, it won't break if you don't do it exactly that way, but just helpful to know. So I wet my fingers with some water and I'm mixing my putties together until there is a uniform green throughout the whole putty. And then basically to get started on your tentacles, you can just bust off a piece of putty and then roll it on your hand or between your fingers. Just make sure that your fingers are wet with some water so that it's not gonna stick. And then you can just roll it into kind of a carrot shape, tapered at one end, thick at the other end. That's the basic shape for a tentacle. If you wanna go at it, the hard way, you can just make tentacles like this, and then you can go in and you can take a sculpting tool, make sure it's lubricated with some water or some Nivea, and you can just go and do a little kind of your marks on the tentacle. I wouldn't recommend doing this way for a number of reasons that I'm gonna get into. But if you don't have the other tools and you just wanna do it yourself, you can just do something like that to get some basic texture on the tentacle. And then the next step is just to pose it. I tend to just kind of like take a tool and just kind of like bend it around until I get it into the shape that I more or less like, and then put it aside to set. My buddy Hydra, who taught me a lot of things, gave me this really cool tool, officially known as the Hydra Tentacle Posing Tool. If you look at that CD, you can see there's a lot of squiggly tentacle marks on it. The idea for this was that you could take a tentacle that you have and kind of drape it over this round thing. It doesn't have to be a pen. It could be like a, a pencil crayon, a pencil, anything extra that you have kicking around the house. And what this does is it allows you to get that kind of like curve in the tentacle in three dimensions while it's curing on this pen. And that's to aid in the tentacle not being just like flat and two dimensional. But this is still tough because you gotta put your little like details into it. And then as it dries, it's gonna be flat on the bottom side and it's gonna be detailed on the top side. That's not so bad, but honestly, the detail I've sculpted onto this is a little rough. So this is one way you can do it. And when that tentacle cures, it's gonna be something like this. This one you can see is very flat. The thing with this one is that it is just green stuff. There's nothing inside. So if you're gonna glue it in a place where it's gonna be protected, that's okay. But if it's not protected, you can see that you can very easily snap pieces off of it. But that's okay, because we've got a solution for that. If you look at this tentacle here, you can see that this cheeky little bugger's got a wire through it. And this is actually something that I got from one of the fine people on Instagram who suggested that I put wires in the middle of my tentacles before I was just gluing them together in masses so that they could support each other because I wasn't aware of how useful this is and how easy it is to shape a tentacle with a wire in the middle of it. So what you wanna do is take some green stuff like you did with your first tentacle, roll it into that rough kind of carrot shape, tapered at one end, thicker at the other end. And then you get some very fine gauge copper wire or brass wire that is very malleable. See this? I can bend this any which way and it's not that thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get roughly the length that I want my tentacle to be. Actually, it's gonna be a little longer than the tentacle sticking out both ends. Then I am going to cut it here. And then simply take that piece of wire, take your tentacle, push your tentacle onto that wire and then get um, your favorite sculpting tool. Lube it up with a little bit of Nivea. I have a whole video on Nivea. If you're worried about having to wash your models after it, you don't have to wash your models after. Get a little bit of Nivea on there, just kind of like a thin skim of oil. Doesn't have to look that very white. That's probably more than enough. And then just use that to push the green stuff around that wire. This part can be a little tricky because the green stuff can kind of like slip and slide around it, but you just want to envelop it. You could even use your fingers if they're lubricated enough. So just wrap that around. You can get some kind of cool textures if you spiral the green 
green stuff around the wire. You just want to make sure that the wire is fully encased with green stuff, that there's not like a big gaping hole anywhere. And make sure you're trying to keep that rough tapered shape thicker at one end, thinner at the other. I'm just going to smooth this a little bit. You can spread the green stuff further down the wire. If you, again, don't have any tools to give a texture to the tentacle, you could use your fingerprints. That gives kind of like a Stereated, is that the word we're looking for? Kind of a, there's a bit of texture on there for my fingerprints. So just make sure you spread it kind of evenly down the wire, keep it rounded. You can roll it between your fingers there. And again, tapered at one end. And then what you can do is you take one end, grip the wire just beyond the green stuff, grip the wire just beyond the green stuff, and go to town posing. Just kind of flex it, twist it, because this wire is such fine gauge, it's it's pretty malleable. Um, I'm not getting a amazing, but I'm getting kind of like a cool curve on that tentacle. So that's kind of like a neat shape there. And then the reason you've got these wires on the end is so the tentacle can cure and not touch anything. You can get one of your handy dandy alligator clip and just kind of like snap that in there. And then uh, it can just hang out like that and it can cure. When it's, it's at this stage, you can also add a little more detail and you could just kind of like go around and add some banding to the tentacle. The only issue at this point is because you've just put green stuff directly onto a wire armature, if you push it around like this enough, it could shift around the armature and kind of mess up the shape. This is not the best way to do it, but if you don't have the tools I'm about to show you, it works. And because you got that wire sticking out the end, it's easy to hold on to. So you can see there's some texture on that tentacle now. It's not perfect. We could go in there with something like a knife tool and add texture or banding around it. Just gonna make sure you're keeping it the right way. Again, you risk pushing the putty off the wire, but it can be done. You can see it's got some detail. It's not gonna win any awards, but uh, I'm not trying harder because I have a better system that I'm about to show you. Anyway, so we'll get that one out of here. We'll put it over with our previous attempt. But um, ideally, I would recommend that you use something like a tentacle maker. And what is a tentacle maker, you may ask? You could build a tentacle maker yourself. It's just it's just basically two textured plates that you, you roll your tentacle between to get like lines cut into it. But fortunately, some folks have made them for us and made them a lot easier and better. So I'm just gonna make some tentacles here to demonstrate. So we're gonna make two small tentacles and one large tentacle. And again, the first step is to get your fine gauge wire that you're gonna use for posing your tentacle. Get a little bit sticking out both ends and cut it to size. So again, you want your wire to be slightly longer than the tentacle at both ends. So next step, you take your green stuff and you wrap it around your wires. And for this one, you want the, the wire to be pretty straight. I forgot to mention that. It's most helpful to have it be as straight as possible and you will see why in a second. Best way to do this is really just like spiral the green stuff around the uh, the wire and then just pat it down. That's two. What you're gonna do at this stage is that you're going to not try and do that awkward thing where you sculpt the detail on. You're gonna use a very helpful tool called a ba -ba -ba -ba, tentacle maker. So we got here three different tentacle makers. This one says saw 050 on it. This one says Tentacle Maker Vex 040 on it. And this one says Tentacle Maker Saw 20 on it. And you can see that on the top plates, there is also Green Stuff Industries Saw 50. So that way you can tell which top plate matches which bottom plate, which is helpful because what you see here is that these plates have a texture on them. This one is like a sawtooth texture, hence why it's called saw. And 50 is the, the size of it. This one's vex because if you look at it, it's more of a, a convex shape than a saw two shape there. The final one, the saw 20, is same as the saw 50, but way, way smaller. These three tentacle makers are from an awesome American company called Green Stuff Industries. It's run by a really nice guy named Rich. He does it for fun in his spare time. And he pretty much, he makes some other hobby supplies, but this is pretty much his game, making these tentacle makers. I buy my tentacle makers from Rich and not some other European-based company that you might have heard of because they have sketchy business practices. In fact, they may have ripped off their tentacle maker from someone else. But Rich is chill and he's always been good to me. I bought these tentacle makers from him, but he may have sent me some other tentacle makers that we're going to be giving away a little later in the video. So keep tuned for that. So I'm just going to show you how these different makers work. 
when you buy a set of tentacle makers from him, it comes with all three of these, the Saw 50, the Saw 20, and the Saw, the Vex 40. And let's see how their patterns work. So uh, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your tentacle. We'll start with the Saw 20. When you look at the tentacle makers, they've got an interesting shape. They've got this base plate that has a kind of like a, a bracket or an end piece here. And then it's got this top plate and the textured sides go together, texture to texture. And you'll see there's an angle here. Why is there an angle there? So that you can do this. What does that look like? One of our carrots. So this is how you get the texture on your, your tentacle. And he's designed it in such a way that it hinges like that when you're rolling so that you can keep that tapered shape on the tentacle, which is a lot less, a lot more useful than having one that's just like flat like that. First step when you're using one of these tentacle makers is you want to make sure that the contact surfaces are lubricated. You could use Nivea if you really wanted to. I tend to just use water. Yeah, so both of them are lubricated now with water. And you take that angle piece, stick it in there, take your tentacle, stick it in the... You don't even have to like run this down all the way, but you want to keep that angle when you're rolling the tentacle. And then you just position your tentacle in the center of the wet piece, put the top on, and then just roll it and keep that angle. You can't see it too well, but I'm rolling like this. So you can see that it's keeping the, the taper. And you just roll it back and forth like that. So you want to go all the way across, really, to make sure you get the texture on the full, all 360 degrees around that tentacle. And then when you pull it out, pull it out and examine it closely, you can see that it now has ridges spiraling around it. This one doesn't look exactly perfect, I think, because I flattened it a bit, but it's, it's pretty much there. So once you've got that texture rolled onto it, you do what we did before, which is you grab both ends with your pliers, and then you just pose it. Yeah, you get the idea. And then you could change it so it's a little more 3D. Maybe you want the end reaching out more. Oh, I kind of pressed on there, which is not great. Gotta be careful of that. So yeah, you roll them, you pose them, and then you set them aside to dry. So that's the saw 20, which we saw is like a very, very fine detail. You use this for cable, for tentacles. You can use this for cabling as well. And that would work for like kind of electrical cabling. And when you're doing cabling, instead of, of course, doing the taper that you'd need on the tentacle, you can just roll it flat like this. Okay, so that's saw 20. So next, let's try VEX 40. So again, I'm going to wet both plates. Oh, I guess that's the other thing, that these are reversible. So if you were doing uh, cabling and you wanted it to be flat, not tapered, you just do it like that. And if you're, you wanted to do tentacles, flip it around like that, and then you can do that, hinge it up to do that taper. So we're going to stick our tentacle in there. And the cool thing, because these are clear, you can see where the tentacle is in between and where it's rolling around. The Vex 40 is the one that I tend to use for Tyranid tentacles. I feel like it looks most like what I expect to see on a, on a Tyranid like feeder tendril or something like that. Again, I'm rolling like this, keeping it tapered. So there we go. And we take this out of here. This one I find very pleasing for Tyranids, the Vex pattern. More organic, less, again, Take your handy dandy pliers, stick them on either end, and just go to town. And then you put it in your handy dandy drying rack so it'll cure up. Let's try the Saw 50, which is the, the big kahuna. I'm gonna wet both plates, make sure it's nice and moist. Stick your tentacle in there, preserve your taper, and go to town. Gotta give a little bit of force. And I tend to put more force at the, the point, towards the point, and then less force here. If you see there's like less detail here, you can adjust the amount of force you're putting on it at that end, because if you have it kind of flat and not tapered, this detail's already preserved, and then it'll like add, push the, more of the detail onto the back. And then take it out, and you can see that the valleys between are much deeper on the Saw 50. This is for like larger tentacles, larger cables, that kind of thing. Or if you just want your like smaller tentacles to have like more pronounced rings on them, then the Saw 50 is the thing for that. So then we'll take this, take this, and kind of push them together. It'll buckle. And you can do a little bit of like screwing up the surface if it gets you what you need, because you can always come back and like clean up a little bit of the detail later. Once you got it posed, you can put it in your handy dandy tentacle holder 
or you can just rest it on something carefully. What you do is you leave those and you let them cure. And then once they've cured, you can snip off the, the bits at the end. You can use like a little bit to kind of sculpt a little point on there. And then you can use the other end of it to anchor the tentacle into your model. Because you don't want to just like, I used to just like take the individual tentacles and just like glue them on. But it's much more secure when you have these wires in, especially because tentacles are something that are going to extend off your model. So having that holding it connected to your model and having the, the wire armature underneath makes them a lot more steady and less likely to snap off. But we did also make them with pure green stuff, so that makes them more flexible. Yeah, so that's how to use the Green Stuff Industries Tentacle Maker Kit. One kit comes with all three of these different tentacle makers. It's a pretty good deal because you get a good variety of different plates with the one kit. And at the time of posting this video, it was on sale for $19.95 US, which is pretty cheap. And I feel like the shipping is not that bad to Canada, so it can't be that bad to the rest of the world. And I feel like they're often on sale. It's called the Tentacle Maker Toolbox. I'm going to put a link in the description below so that you can find it. If you watch this video, you think this is cool, you want to place an order with Green Stuff Industries, let Rich know that uh, Modern Synthesis, Mr. Pink sent you. And you know, maybe that'll be helpful for me later. But I highly recommend this kit. It's very cheap. I can't believe it comes with three of these for 20 bucks. And they're going to serve you well. Hopefully this has been helpful, showing you how to make tentacles for your Tyranids or your wire cables for other things. If you have any questions about making tentacles, problems you've run into when trying to make tentacles for your own models, please hit me up in the comments below. Let me know what your questions are, what your problems are. We can try and troubleshoot them together. If there's any other tentacular related videos you'd like to see me make, let me know about those and we can have a run at it. And to get you started, we're going to have a little giveaway. So I have two more of these sets to give away, generously donated by Rich over at Green Stuff Industries. Each one of these includes one Saw 50, one Saw 20, and one Vex 40 tentacle roller. So you get three different tentacle makers in this one kit. Two lucky people are going to be rolling, rolling, rolling tentacles with these awesome rollers from Green Stuff Industries. What I'm going to ask you to do is to let me know which existing model in any model range, any race, is most in need of tentacles. Doesn't have to be a tier it doesn't have to be a gene sealer it could be anything this contest is going to be judged i'm going to send all the entries to my good buddy hydra who is a master of tentacles and he's going to pick two winners from that list head on over to that patreon post right now leave a comment on it or follow the instructions to send an email let me know what is the model that is most in need of tentacles and there'll be full details on that post for when the uh, giveaway ends make sure you get your entries in and two of you will be walking away with handy danny tentacle maker sets from green stuff industries or if you you don't want to wait for the draw you just want to go and get them right now you can head on over to the green stuff industries website i've linked it in the description below thanks for watching and happy sculpting